Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of my little series, how to hack any software on your computer. In this video we want to do string hacking. So we want to modify hard-coded string literals inside the binary, which isn't even that hard. It's pretty easy compared to machine language. And I'm going to show you how to do it with a simple example. And I'm also going to show, uh, show you how to do it inside a big application. So the thing is, you might think string hacking, modifying constant string, isn't that great or cool, but trust me, it is. You can, for example, return a different server status. You can enter different credentials. You could change strings in general, hardcoded strings. And there are plenty of hardcoded strings, more than you probably think. Of course, some programs are using multi-language support or databases or text files for their strings, but trust me, there are many of hardcoded strings. They are actually useful to modify. So remember that all of this is only for educational purposes. I do not take any responsibility if you destroy everything or whatever you do, um, you do it on your own responsibility. So let's take a look at that little C program. It's basically the same as last time. Let's take a look. All right, so let's open this in Nano so we get a little bit of highlighting. All right. So we have here int main printing our string and the string is just um, a string literal pointing to some memory. So how does this actually work? What does the C compiler do? So if you take a look at the type, it's a pointer uh, pointing to const characters and the pointer itself is const2. So we cannot reassign message at runtime. We cannot say message points now to another string. It's completely constant. And this pointer is pointing to memory inside the executable file itself. So somewhere in the exe file, for example, on Windows, and this string that were stored um, as bytes, and this point is just referring to it. So this is not allocated on the heap or on the stack. This is allocated in the static uh, data section of the executable file. So in this case, um, there is a zero terminator which is just a zero char appended to a string that were. It's it's invisible. The compiler does it for you. And that's there for the length. So in C++, um, for example, SD string or in C Sharp or Java, you always uh, have a length property of a string. How many characters are there in the string? And in C, you do not have this. You have a zero terminator. And in order to get the length of a string, you have to iterate through each character and count it. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you go on until you reach a zero and there you stop. And we need that zero terminator because um, if we print the message, printf is going to print all the characters one by one. So it's going to print this H E L L O. And we want to stop at the zero because we don't know what's afterwards. So we could just access memory, which is not meant for us. So we're going to crash. So the same zero terminator is like, um, it's also called a sentinel because it's just like the last sentinel before other, uh, and any other memory region starts. So we will see later in the binary that uh, there is a server of the hello friends. But for now, let's just say we print it here um, and let's just compile this. And uh, we're gonna get a warning because um, printf is for formatted, print formatted. Um, the compiler normally wants a string letter as format string. So it wants us to say like percent %s, which means write a string, format a string, but in this case, it's okay. We could have used put s, put string, but it doesn't really matter in this case. So let's just um, execute it, hello friends. As we expected, right? And let's just try to modify these bytes. I've said they're somewhere in the executable. So let's open the executable using a so-called hex editor. And we're gonna use ghex because it's also available on Windows. And if someone using Windows, they can also follow this tutorial. So. Let's go to our executable file, open it. And using this editor, you can open any file. Any file is just like a byte array. You can open an image, an exe file, a zip file, whatever you want. And this is like in the hex editor, you have um, the offsets here. So this is just zero. And this is just zero plus the amount of row um, columns. So this is it. And as you can see, these are all the bytes inside the file. And this is the, this is the string representation. So some of these, if they make sense as a char, they are displayed here as characters and here are the strings. And as you can see, there aren't that many, um, but here are our strings, what we've searched for. But there are two versions. So 
in order to know which one it is, we want to modify both in a different manner. So we can just change the bytes. Let's change this H to an, to an J and change this H to an L and say file save. And what we've done now, we've changed the program. This is exactly the same we're going to do with mas machine language in the third video. But in this case, we are modifying only the constant and um, data, um, the variables. In the next video, we're going to modify the machine language to also influence the logic. So we've changed the strings here, saved and executed again. Lello, friends. So we've changed this byte and the program doesn't even know. I mean, how should it? It's just constant memory inside the executable file. It cannot know these changed. So we know this is the string. This is the string uh, which we're printing. So let's just change the string to, for example, I don't know. Um, let's change it to what's up, guys. What's up, guys? Let's say save and execute. What's up, guys? Pretty easy, right? So there's one thing. We can only override the length of the original string. So the string we are overriding must have exactly the same size as the original string had. Of course, if you only want to bring, uh, print um, what's up, we can just pet this with spaces, so override it with the space character. Gonna save and execute what's up. But we cannot write um, any longer string in here. Why? Because um, if we take a look, these are the spaces, 20 hexadecimal here. And this is the zero terminator I've talked about. The memory after this, what's coming after, is completely undefined. We don't know what's there. Only the compiler knows. The compiler knows, hey, this string little roll is like 15 chars long. It's going from here to this zero over here. And afterwards, the compiler probably allocated a different variable. So for example, there could be a different string here, or this could be some binary data for a standard library or everything. We don't know exactly what it is. It could also be machine language. For example, there's an um, 48 here, here, for example. So 48 is a Rex prefix. It could be machine language. So we don't know what's there. So we can only override the same length of the string, but we cannot insert a long string. That's not possible. It would be possible if we pad the whole program. So if we, for example, want to say like, um, we put three chars inside here, then we would have to basically move all this content two bytes down. And this can be really dangerous if they are hard coded, like for example, um, if there are some pointers referring to, um, if there are link time optimizations, this can crash. It can also work, but it can also crash. So this is not too easy to do. It can work, but it's a little bit more tricky. So for, for, for the start, let's say just write the same string as the original. So this was pretty easy, but it also was only a little example. So let's take a look at it with a bigger application. And for that, I have something really cool, a little game project written by me, written in C++, um, a 3D game engine actually. And let's try to hack the application. So let's start it first. I'm gonna show you what it does. Um, oh. And you have seen, I've already compiled it. It takes a while to compile. It's a huge project. Um, 25 megabytes of binary, a million lines of code, of a lot of libraries. Let's start it. And as you can see, here we have it. And what, what's this? It's basically just like a space game or an astronomy software. I'm also not quite sure what it's going to be, but it's going to be something cool. It's just a fun project to write some shaders and everything. And what we want to do um, in this video, in the next video, we're going to try to influence the logic. So like flying the um, the double speed, flying um, flying much faster. And we want to try to scale the planet and to like execute a command if we click something here or anything like that. But in this video, we want to only change the menu items. And I know this sounds maybe not that cool, but trust me, it is really powerful. You can change a lot of return strings and status codes and everything. So we want to try to change Astrolab, the name of the application. We'll also try to change a string over here. And the first thing um, important when you want to try to change a string is you need to find a unique string. Because like file, the string is so generic in programming, you're going to find thousands or millions of strings containing files somewhere in the binary. 
So I thought simulation is probably pretty unique, but no, it's not. I've scanned the program before and there are plenty of simulation helpers in some libraries too. So what I think is pretty unique um, is teleporter. I think teleporter isn't used that much in programming. So this tool is just for setting the current camera position to the planet because it's a scale one to one. So it, it would take a long time to fly to the planets, even when you're flying pretty fast. So let's, let's try to change the string teleporter. And we're going to do exactly the same um, as before. Let's just clear this. I like it when it's just clean. And open our GHEX editor again. And when I say file open, um, documents, Mario project, Astro Lab. And when I open the executable, 27 megabytes, it's huge. And to get an insight on how huge it really is, look at the slider here. I'm scrolling literally as fast as I can. It's not even moving. It's huge. 27 megabytes is huge. It's 27 million bytes. So in order to find a string inside this huge mess, we of course need a search tool and we have this edit find. And here we can just, um, here we can just enter the string we're searching for in this case, teleporter. And you can see here it's printing the byte representation. Let's say find next. And oh, we've already found some. Over here, these bytes are exactly matching this pattern. These bytes here, down here in red, are exactly the same. So we see teleporter is also the strings here. But I've written this game engine and I know in GUI Manager Render Teleporter, this is the function which renders the window of the teleporter. But that's not what we want. We want to change the teleporter name, not the function name of the window. So this is not what we've searched for. And these are probably many mangled name from the linker and there are also some file names because the panic routine which is like for federal system crashes prints the file name and so it also needs to be somewhere in here let's say find next again rent teleporter and oh this one looks good because with a string we've also had in the menu exit tools was also in the menu help also and teleporter, so this looks pretty good. And as you can see, they're all also terminated by a zero. There's always a zero. Exit, zero, tools, zero. So there's always this zero, zero terminator here. This looks good, let's try to override it. And let's say just um, something cool like hacked. Like this, hacked oh, only until the zero terminator. So. You can see also here there are some format strings, um, like formatting text. For example, this one is from the C standard library. It's formatting unsigned size T. And these are the new C++ 20 um, FMT formatting um, symbols. So, okay, we've written hacked. Let's save our file and execute the software and see if it even runs because we modified it. But looks good so far. Tools hacked. Oh, the application has been hacked. So as you can see, We've changed the name of the menu. That's something cool, I think, because it's not that easy. So, but in this case, it's the fault of the application because the string literals are hard coded. And as you can see, we changed it here and we changed it here. And why is that? Because the pointer is referring to the same memory. If we have the string hacked in our program, there's no reason to include the same string 20 times if we're referring to it 20 times. So the compiler is just including it, for example, one time. And the pointer is always pointing to the same address. And I want to prove that to you with a little test program. So let's create a file. And we just want to compare two pointers and print if they're equal. So I'm going to do an int main. All right, so what's this here? We have two variables, message one or message two. They're both pointing to the same string little, but message two, neither message one is assigned directly to each other. They're just pointing to the same string. And 
this boolean operator will return one if they're equal and zero if they're not equal and this is an unsigned uh, print formatting and um, like i said uh, print if it's for formatting so it's gonna print and like this as an unsigned integer so let's write this out and compile and see um msg1 is not declared MS, uh, msg got a typo here msg1 like this all right and execute it and as you can see right here it's printed a one so these pointers referred to the same memory address the address where this pointer is pointing to the the h in this case is the same so both painter pointers have the same value and that's what I want to prove to you. So if I change this string literal and I print message two, it's also going to print the change from message one if we do it in a binary because they're referring to the same memory. So that's what I wanted to show you basically that the, the value is only stored once. And some compilers can also do substring slicing. And this, for example, means I'm just going to explain this simple. Let's say you have hey um hey viewers make it like this and now we have the string viewers okay so we know hey viewers ends with the zero terminator and here we just need viewers which um also ends with the zero terminator so instead of including viewers and heavy viewers it this pointer is just pointing to this pointer but skipping the first three bytes so it's like for example the same as writing msg and then in this case this is the zero one two we want to do two and we want to do three so we want to put three in here like this and we want to use an ampersand to um to get the pointer of it and let's just print msg2 so and what this does this is indexing basically um as an array so it's going to one two uh, zero one two three and then it's taking the pointer of viewers and let's print this and see how it works I'll compile and uh oh again today it's really tricky of course this is msg1 and execute it and as you can see it printed viewers and that's substring slicing. So the compiler, instead of including the same string, it's just the point is just referring to a substring containing contained in another string. And of course, it's saving memory. So if you have two long strings and the one string is contained with another at the end, it has to be at the end because we need the zero terminator. The compiler can actually refer to the string inside the other string. So I think that's just cool to know. All right. So the last thing I want to do in this video is to change the title of the window. So let's um, execute it again take a look and I want to change this astrolab and astrolab is pretty much the worst string to find because the whole application the project was named astrolab so there are plenty of namespace references and everything containing astrolab and in order to do that we need to search and I don't know how long it's going to take so I might do a cut we will see documents maria project astrolab astrolab executable and I want to go to the beginning and search for Astrolab. Astrolab. And we, what we want to do in this case, you want to append. Um, uh, we want to append an um, explicit zero terminator. So we know it has to be. It has to happen zero terminator because it's just a string literal hot coded. So let's um, search for this and this. I want to do this like so try find next find previous all right and here we go you can see it already found it astrolab with the zero terminator and I, i've written this application i of course know way to create window finalizing window this is from the engine boot core code so this is from the code where the engine is starting and loading so let's give this a try so let's change this to, I don't know, um, hacker22 and say save. And let's execute our program again. 
And as you can see, it worked. Our program is now no more Astrolab, it's now Hacker22. And this is also the end of the video. So this is what I wanted to show you what string literal hacking is. Um, and of course, this also works with other constant values. If you're like constant initializing large arrays or structs, you can also change the values of these fields. But it's easier with strings because you can directly see the strings over here. And you can just see if a string is um, makes sense or not, of course. If, you, if they're just some random variables and struct values, you're going to take a look at the bytes and you can for example, um, interpret them as different data types here, like bytes, shorts, int, longs. And it's also possible, but it's not that easy. So we're going to do it in another video. So also, if you this was um, made for ASCII strings and extended ASCII strings, like 8-bit um, ASCII. So if you want to use different string formats, like UTF-16 or UTF-32 or white strings, like they're often used in C++, then you um, have a problem because there are a different encoding. So I don't think this editor supports it, but um, there is a way to do it. We are also going to do an extra video on that on how to um, reverse engineer and change Unicode strings. So this is also a mission for another video. But so just, you know, if you're using Unicode strings, especially UTF-16, where every character is um, two bytes or UTF-32, where every character is four bytes, it's, an, it's harder and a different story. But it's also, of course also possible. So we're gonna take a look at that too. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video. It was a bit, little bit longer than the last one, but um, this was a string hacking video. I hope I hope that you learned something and that you um, that you will still have a great day um, and a great evening for myself. So uh, thank you for watching and have a have a great evening. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. So. Yeah, next video we're gonna do machine language manipulation, probably with the same application. We try to change a logic so logic so if we for example click on something or press um, a key that something different is executed instead of the intended code. So that's also gonna be a little bit longer video. So alright, I hope to see you there and have a nice evening.